first question, Brandon, is uh, regarding the, the name of the band. Mm -hmm. First of all, I, I, I believe that um, it was um, it came from a, a small town in North Carolina, and no, this is not uh, the, the case. It comes from um, a novel or a chapter in a book, I think, regarding um, going, speaking about Bob Dylan. Going, going back a little bit, um, when I started the band with two other guys, um, the original member guy Steve, and we, we come from a part of Perth, our home city, it's called the hills you know it's like out of out of the city and so um but we we had a gig we had a show and we had we must decide on a band name i had a long list of names and that was all, all shit you know so and we did one show under another name uh, the fins or something like that you know it was like, and it's like man and then i was at a party with a friend an english guy who used to be a punk he was he was my boss actually at, at the school i was working at and he had a book the Invisible Republic, which is a musicology book by Grail Marcus, mm -hmm. and it's the history of old American folk music. All right. And he was just telling me about it, and, uh, and uh, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, there's this chapter about this this area called the Kill Devil Hills, and it's really interesting. Do you know the Harry Smith anthology of American no, folk no, music? No, no. It's very special. It's like three volume set of American folk music. All right. And this very strange al this experimental filmmaker, alchemist. He was a um, like an older mentor to the beat poets like Kerouac and Burroughs and he was like a you know right. really interesting guy I smoked a lot of hash <laughs> and and he was the anthologist and my friend was telling me about this and Graham Marcus wrote a book about the connections between that music that old music which was from 1928 until 1932 mm -hmm. with American folk music anyway long story mm -hmm. but the chapter was called Kill Devil Hills and I thought yeah. And I had a nap of serviette in my pocket, so yeah, I'll get a band name. That's the story. Right. And I didn't know that it was the place. I just liked the words. You know. So you make a sort of, of link uh, between uh, Bob Dylan and, and your own music? No, I didn't. No, no, no. It was really. just the word the hills. Right. Just purely because the hills, right. you know. Okay. It sounded ugly. <laughs> so right. it's like, you know. Okay, you say you come from uh, Fremantle, I think, or Perth? Yep. Yep. Yeah, Fremantle's like the port. All right. Yeah. Um, we usually know the, the Melbourne scene on the Port Brisbane, but not a lot about uh, Perth. Uh, what about this uh, music scene Perth, in Australia? Okay. Um, a lot of musicians start in Perth and, and they migrated to Sydney in the 70s and 80s and in, to Melbourne in the 90s and 2000s. So um, Perth's kind of quite an insular small place. I mean, it's got a really good music scene now. I mean, you know, Tame Impala and this type of band, they've come out of Fremantle, like, you know, bedroom recordings, so they're, they're very big bands. But um, the, the bands in Perth that I really liked were those, like the scientists, the Hoodoo Gurus were there. Like there was a, there was a punk scene in, in Perth in 1970. Eight, the first band was called The Victims. This drummer, the batterist, he plays with the Beast of Bourbon now, but we used to be the original member, James Baker. He went to New York, he saw the New York Dolls, he saw all these bands, and he came back to Western Australia. It's like it's for for which band, you say? The Victims. The Victims. The Victims, and then, um, what's it called? The, I can't remember, but then, and then there was the next generation of bands, the Mannequins, Mannequin, Mannequin, yeah. and the Scientists, the early Scientists. And to me, the Scientists were the, important band yeah. you know and then at the same time you know you have all of the people from yeah people sort of migrated away but i mean i think perth has always been um like a petri dish <laughs> for for music you know right. and it's 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 expensive to travel and play so a lot of people go and live in melbourne and sometimes mm -hmm. the bands go well sometimes they you know because I don't know, but Perth's got a healthy scene now. A lot of international acts come through because of the yes. travel route, yes. you know. So it's 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 changed a lot since that time, you know. But All right. I started playing. I started playing in the '90s with a band called the Gutterville Splendor Six, which was before the Kildare Hills. There was also, and then we came out of there with the Drones. You know the Drones? Yeah. Yeah. Course, I, yes. I played early with the Drones, and then the Kildare Hills. We came out of that same pool, you know. So we have a yeah. Right. It was like an anti-music. In Perth at that time in the 90s, there was a lot of power pop. Power pop. Down, down, yeah. down, 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 and I don't like it. You know? So we, we, we did this music, it's like, fuck you, you know, like, you know we, we'll do this, you know, let's make it, it's really loud. We didn't have a tuning pedal, you know, it was all 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty. It's pretty. So at, at the very beginning, I think your music was rather quiet. Yes. Or, yes. Uh, and it, it, it uh, changed afterwards. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And Because I played in a lot of heavy bands, and Steve also played in a lot of heavy bands. We're like. And we both, I think we both broke up with our girlfriends and we're like, let's do it just a relaxed band, you know, let's have acoustic guitars, don't carry amplifiers, you know, like, and, and that lasted for a short time. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. And so, um, how could you, uh, could we uh, describe uh, your uh, music today? Is it uh, what we could call the Americana or alternative country with uh, um, influences of blues, bluegrass, and And so on, folk, maybe think, US folk? Or I think early on, uh, not really now. I think originally in the first maybe couple of albums, there was a lot of, I was listening to Gillian Welch and a lot of, you know, a lot of old blues stuff and folk music. And I was really interested in the potential for doing really interesting music with acoustic instruments. And then we started using electric instruments. So it just became more natural to the band and more intense. And that moved, I think, away from that. And I think. Yeah, I think there was a period of time when it was kind of like a like an old country sound, absolutely, you know. But now there's a bit of that, but I think the the new the newer music we're doing is um, yeah, very different from that. So I think it's you know, it's 16 years. So yes. Like a, yes, you know, of course. Yeah. It changes. And so 16 years of career and um, five albums, I think. Yep. Up to now, um, do you? Consider yourself more uh, as a, a live band or a studio band? What do you prefer? In fact? Um, I mean, originally we were a live band, and out of that came the recordings or the songs. But I mean, for me personally, I, I prefer the writing, creative, recording process above anything. It's, it's, it's. I love that. You know, that's that to me is the happy place. You know, yeah. Right. I, 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 I like. I like performing live, but it's stressful. You know, it's like, and it, it's, any, everything goes wrong, or you know, and it's a good, it's a good thing. But yeah, I mean, I like, I like playing live. I, di I didn't used to like playing live, and um, but now I think you know my, uh, my 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 preference, of course, is is just to be creating together. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. There's two things I love. I love creating in, and working on new songs, and I love traveling with the band and All playing right. places like here. You know, or coming over, out out of out of Australia and yes. it's, it's really good uh, to do that. Yeah. All right. So you, you, um, you said that um, album after album, LPs after LPs, uh, you have uh, new sonic territories. Um, how would you describe this evolution? It starts quiet and, and then, uh, as you say, uh, electrified? And yeah. I think it's just because of the changing in the members, you know, is the new person brings a different synergy mm -hmm. to the group and they bring with them yeah, new things. Yeah. yeah, and we have really different tastes in music, you know, like and we don't we don't talk about oh let's make this type of sound. It's more just the natural influence of everybody's individual tastes and um, preferences and stuff like that has always informed the music first mm -hmm. rather than we want to have the sound it's just it's just so in the earlier albums it was more folk music influence like with the mandolin or the violin but you know I, i mean the big reason we have the violin is because i love the dirty three and and that, that's one of my favorite bands ever which know, one the D dirty three yeah warren ellis and um, and those guys and you know that's that's outstanding and so i always I, I used to listen to the Tinder Sticks, mm -hmm. you know the British band, yeah, and a very very cool band from the 90s and still going, from Sheffield, I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And of course Nick Cave and the Bad Seas early stuff and all the Australian swamp stuff, and I sort of really liked the the string sound in it. And, and when I met Alex, yes, um, we just kind of it just kind of worked, and he he did, he couldn't play. He he taught himself to play. You know, um, with the band, not he wasn't classically trained or anything. So, so. You're, you're speaking about uh, Alex uh, with the, the violin. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, it's um, this violin has uh, a lot of importance yeah. on, on, for yeah. your music or yeah. on, on, on stage. Um, could you imagine today a, a shorter band because you are six on stage? Yeah. Or uh, does every instrument or person, musician, have its own place? Yeah. 
um, that you cannot or that cannot be changed in fact yes that yeah that, that's yeah, the, yeah because I think we play individually we play less but the collective effect is is, is bigger yeah um, I think in the in the in the way the band is playing like everybody does small pieces but at the right time you know maybe in the past we all did the bigger pieces all at the same time so it's like you know it can be a little bit like a pirate band or something mm -hmm. and a little bit more punk you know and I think now we are listening more to each other and and Luke the new guitarist relatively the most recent yeah. from, the floors. from the floors and um, you know we've known each other for years and when Steve left the band he was the natural person to play and he's you know he you know I think I think over time we've realised that the you know the aphorism the less is more you know and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can still have a very big sound and a very big effect through the dynamics if everybody if everybody shuts up sometimes and then you know it's like a dum dum you know like that that boxing yeah. idea you know I think that's kind of how we approach the arrangements you know it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, interesting yeah it's it's quite organic it's not like you know we, all right. Let's talk about, if you want, uh, about the, your uh, last album, Pink uh, Fit, mm -hmm. uh, which was recorded live in, in three days. Yep. Why exactly? Because we <laughs> needed an album. <laughs> because we were coming to Europe again after a long time. And we had some songs, and we had some, uh, maybe one song on that album was a very old song, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the other ones were very new. and. We had three days and we thought, well, if we record one song or two songs, we can have a 12 inch and we wanted a new, some new material for, for Bang Records in Spain. And they yep. wanted something and they said, yeah, cool, we'll do it. But we recorded six songs, so okay, cool. I'm happy with that. That's, that's, it's not an album, it's not an EP, it's somewhere, I oh know, it's just something, it's just a new phase. And it was really, it was really easy to do. Just like, I thought it would be more difficult. We had limited time. We had to do it really quickly to right. send it to pressing and finish the mix and everything. So um, yeah, it happened really quickly, and it was quite a simple process, really. So there was no plan, only yeah. that we needed something new, and we wanted a representation of the the current lineup, you know, in, right. at this time. So, what about the the, the lyrics? Do you have uh, literary uh, inspirations or references? Uh, on who write the, on, the songs on, on, you on that written? album? You mean? Yes, or on the last album? Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, I write, I write the songs. Yeah, um, I read a lot. I mean, of course, you know, like language is language. It's you know, it's which novelist? A virus, you know. Uh, which novelist? Uh, Australian ones or US or that I read? I read a lot of um, strange science fiction, mostly. That's my preference. Like, um, that's my favorite type of reading um, but in that album actually there's a poem I think it's credited on the album I'm just trying to remember her name but in the song Helsinki actually there was a part of that chorus that's a very old poem by an American poet mm -hmm. and her name is Mary I forget I should know this but I can't remember but she's she's good and it's a very simple poem just called my body my house my heart my body my Body my, body my house, my horse, my hound. What will I do when you are fallen? And it was a longer poem, but I just took that part. And so poetry, yeah. And I like lots of different types of novels. I mean, I you know I've studied literature. I read a lot, yeah. as much as possible. And um, I think for me, when I, when I'm writing, and also like the song Petrov '83, that was a story in the newspaper. I'm always interested in the news and mm -hmm. the stories inside the stories. You know, like um, All right. what what is a sort of semi-fictional approach to it you know like you know, there's the real world story but to me it's like yeah I don't know sometimes it's just like you know I, I think I, I think my best writing happens when it's like I write the lyrics and I don't know the music and it's just like there's a poem and so I had acidosis was a poem it was just in a book we were jamming I was like oh I'll get some words blah, 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 you know and then you change it after of course but you know but or we'll develop it but I think it's good. I'm usually making notes or writing, and you know, and um, I don't know exactly what the um, literary influences are because you know, in my life I've read so much, but I'm I'm very interested in mortality, mentality, you know, mortality, mortality. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, it's French Mort word, mortality. Yeah. 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 yeah, to me that's a very interesting uh, existential question. You know, like you know, yeah. life, death. 
being, not being, individually, collectively, you know, globally. Is it universal. usually uh, dark or, or could be uh, no, fun or no, 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 it's meant to be, for me, the, maybe the tone of the songs is a little bit dark, but the, the intention is the mystery, you know, of the, the, of the existence. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, it's not. There's no answer to that. It's just simply a question about a question, or a, yeah. a poem about that. I think it's a very eternal mm. yes. idea. You know, like I mean, I think in the early albums, the influence is more heartbreak and relationship, and mm -hmm. that was my personal shit. And I don't know personally, I'm very interested in um, yeah, and that side of life. You know, and, and the individual spiritual journey and the individual, you know. Mm -hmm. um, ethics and role in the world, you know, I think we live in a very a very turbulent period, so for me, I'm just trying to write about things that I think are the things that I think about, you know, yeah, yeah. like in, in the world, you know, like um, children, I, you know, I, have, I, I, don't, I don't have children, but I have nieces, and so... Mm -hmm. The previous album I wrote a song called Kid, which was a poem about my niece, just when she was like this, just like, you know, just that. It's like, so, and yeah, that's that to me is the natural way to write, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, I don't sit down and go, right, I'm going to write a song about, little earth, but yeah, and then when the words come, the music comes, yeah. usually, you know, usually the words are first. Yeah. So you said, Brendan, that uh, it was the first time that you, you, you come here in Binic, in the festival. Um, what does it uh, represent for you? Um, what is the atmosphere for you? Or uh, do you like it? Or oh, it's... and and why? And why? What are the reasons? Can I why? say this in bad bad yeah, language? Yeah, yeah, bad yeah, French? Do it. Let's it's do fantastic. It. Yeah. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. You know, it's it's a, for us. It's interesting because we played at the Chalon Qui Passe yes. eight years ago under the stairs with Met Ludo and and. Everybody we know in France that has helped us over nine years is here today. Yeah. You know? I'll say, like, hey, you know, from Nîmes, from Toulouse, from Nice, from Paris, from of course Brittany and mm -hmm. Lorient and all these places. And, the and I, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's John Baptiste, of course, yeah. and so people like that. So it's really interesting to play here because it's like a culmination of a lot of, you know busy, not busy time in France and I, I, our intention at the moment is to try and come to Europe every year, mm -hmm. try to do an album, come over. To look. Every year? Yeah, oh, we can, right. we will come back next year, So, like, but we only really restarted this last year because we had a new lineup, mm -hmm. new album and it's like, okay, cool, this is time. And I think also it's become a little bit cheaper to, to come from Australia. Flights, They're expensive with six people, of course. Mm. But um, yeah. we've met really good hot pants people in Paris. The, the agency has built a very good foundation for Australian groups to come and a really good network. I think nine years ago, the network in France was very disparate. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was very some people here. You know, you talk to this guy, and it's, everybody's disconnected, yeah. but they know each other usually through Britain, Breton people, but. Mm. Uh, and now it's, it's completely different. It's, it's much more structured. Yes. You know, this festival has become like a, a meeting place also for music and obviously all the other Australian bands and US, uh, you know, yeah. there's a lot of Australian bands here. So yes. I think for us it's really been really interesting to see the connection between um, Australian music and particular people. in Because, you know, I think it's difficult to play in other parts of France, you know, like. Brittany is like Klein is you know yeah. the sort of epicenter of this, um, and for us also Basque, Pai, Pai, Pai Basque mm -hmm. is also another very important place because the Bang label has helped us begin to reach people here. So those guys were first, you know, and then we through that people heard the music here and we're like, ah, oh, we like it, and then it's like, okay, cool, we'll mm -hmm. come and play, you know. Yeah. So it's been it's been a really long, slow journey. And so playing, you know, playing here last night was fucking awesome. You know, yeah. it, was, it was great. It was really, it was really, you know. Okay. For us, it was great. really, really special. Okay. So afterwards, you go to Germany, I think, and to Czechoslovakia, and then you you, you go back to. Uh, to we go home. Yeah, we've we've been playing in Croson actually in Croson, yeah. on Before. Tuesday. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. That's a small festival there. I think. Yeah, Morga, Madi Madi de Morga. Croson Morga. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there, and then yeah, then we drive to Germany the next day, and then. And then back to Prague because we have a good connection with um, 
the, the Czech, our Czech promoter friend too. So we have a couple more shows there. All right. So we've kind of found a few places where, I don't know, good people write the right relationship and you know, it's possible to do it. So you know, we, we will continue to do that and come yes. back next year. And, great. You, know, you guys are great. So. Great. Love it. You know? yeah. it's, like, it's really, really cool. And, and it's really, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, I, don't want, I don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And last question, Brandon. Um, what can we uh, wish you for the future? Wish? What do you, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, uh, what can expect. we wish you? Uh, yeah, expect, expect for you. Expect. Yeah, yeah. Um, that we'll be back. Um, we actually last week we we were in a, like a, a jit kind of country country farmhouse yeah. near uh, Agen. Oh yeah, and in the we, southwest. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we we had a place for three days and we were just relaxing, but we also started in riding condom. near condom, very near, <laughs> very near to condom. Yeah, yeah. That was that was. We're, we're, That's funny. we're also idiots, you know. Like you know, Australian humour is pretty bass, you know. <laughs> It's very bass. Um, and yeah, we started in the very hot weather. We tried to spend some time every day writing new material. So you know, we have the basis of 60% of the next album. So when we go back to Australia, we'll start working on that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you know, when that's ready, it's ready and we'll come back and that's the plan, you know, and I can and continue to, I think probably, probably late, later next year, maybe October period, we'll be back. All so, right, and, um, good news. Yeah, uh, yes, it, it comes quickly, huh? Yeah. It's like, you know, one yeah, year. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. In October, not this year. Ne no, next, ne year. Ne next, next year. Next year, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It'll be another year. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's um, yeah. We have a window where we can do this and to make it possible. I, I think I think our intention is very much to record more music. You know, we've got a lot yes. of new stuff. We're playing a little bit of new stuff in the set now. We're just trying it out. And, yeah, we've been writing. And, you know, if we if we can, we'd love to record in France. Let's do this. You know, just like go to a place and bring a friend. We have an engineer friend who's fucking great. And, yeah. We're talking about this different ways to do this, but you know, I think we will do it in Australia. You know, it's it's, it's easier to yeah. finish it there. So you know, it's complex. It's complex to record overseas. And, you know, expensive, and we don't, you know, yeah. it's not like we have heaps of money. You know, mm -hmm. all right. So, you know, so so thank you very much for your time. De rien. <laughs>